Did you guys miss me? Because I know I missed you. But I had some things to do for the past few days and I couldn't do any videos, I couldn't watch any wrestling. But don't worry, don't worry. This Sunday and Monday I watched everything. I watched all the Raws, all the Smackdowns, all the NXTs, all the AEW shows, everything. Today we're here now for Monday Night Raw and it's good to watch the show finally and to share my opinion with you guys. So the show started with a scheduled match between Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler but it turned out into a brawl when Raquel Rodriguez came out and after that Rhea Ripley came out and uh, she basically wiped the floor with everyone and stayed in the ring and she was like I want to address the Judgment Day and the Judgment Day came out in, per in particular Dominic and Damien came out and basically she said that while she was gone everything was falling apart and yeah judgment day doesn't have a leader but she's the leader basically and uh, damien priest failed her because she left the responsibility to him and yada 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 and um, that whole segment led to jay Uso coming out and he was like <laughs> mommy Everyone was missing you. You're the new tribal chief here and uh, all of that stuff and that whole thing led to Jey Uso and Cody Rhodes versus the Judgment Day for the titles at Fastlane and This is the role before Fastlane. I, I just realized this is the last role before Fastlane so this Saturday we're gonna see the title switch hands or maybe not maybe maybe not what are the chances of Jey Uso and Cody War uh, Cody Rhodes working as a team I don't know but we will see the only thing that I want to know is why JD McDonough is still is not in the judgment day I know that Damian Priest doesn't like him and JD McDonough every now and then flips up uh, and uh, does something stupid but come on Everyone knows that it's gonna happen that just, just just put trigger just put trigger at this point besides that Rhea Ripley is back. I'm happy that she's back uh, Am I happy to see her fighting Nia Jax? I'm not sure about that one after that we had Alpha Academy versus Imperium match I'm not gonna lie to you. I skipped it a little bit because I kind of don't understand the story. I think the whole thing will lead to Chad versus Gunther again. Um, and eventually Chad will win the title, but we'll see where that whole thing will end up. Big Bronson Reed versus Cedric Alexander. The only thing I want to say here is the more the Cedric Alexander's hair grows, the more I start to like him. At least his looks. So liked his athletic abilities from day one, but now the looks with the long hair, it's fantastic. Did I just kiss my phone? No. After that, we had a weird one. I don't know if that ever happened since I started watching wrestling again like a few years ago. We had a contract signing between Gunther and Tommaso Ciampa, and all of a sudden, from a match to Raw for the Intercontinental Championship, this contract signing turned into a match that is that happened at the main event. <laughs> and I appreciated that because we quickly saw that the Masu Champ is not gonna be the champ, unfortunately. And also Johnny Gargano is back and DIY is back and probably they're gonna fight Imperium as well So we're looking at the three-way match tag situation between Imperium, Alpha Academy and DIY I'm really excited for next week to see where the whole thing is going because at the same time I think that Bronson Reed is gonna try to go after the title as well which is gonna be absurd. Maybe, maybe, li listen, 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 hey, hey, I'm here and I'm talking. Maybe 
it's gonna happen something like Tommaso Ciampa. Listen, maybe right now when Tommaso Ciampa just lost, maybe Bronson Reed will be next and he's gonna f fight with Gunther to for a spot for to be a contender of course and in the meantime they're gonna be like uh, Imperium versus Alpha Academy Imperium versus DIY uh, DIY versus Alpha Academy uh, maybe there's gonna be some DIY versus Alpha Academy to determine who's gonna fight Imperium. While this is happening, as I said, Gunther versus Bronson Reed will be happening. Reed will slowly lose, and we're gonna move forward to Alpha Academy versus Imperium because they're gonna beat the DIY. Or maybe DIY will beat Alpha Academy to start feuding with Imperium. DIY will slowly lose to Imperium as well and after that we are back to Alpha Academy versus Imperium and back to Chad Gable versus Gunther and that whole shtick maybe will take a couple of months but I guess at the start of the next year maybe Chad is finally gonna win the title or maybe someone else will win the title for now Chad seems like the best person to win the title from Gunther he's gonna get a, a a super huge rub after that victory and I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen in general because to be honest I would like to see Ciampa with the title as well, Gargano with the title as well, all the NXT guys I, I really want to see them with a the title but who knows, who knows, uh, really it's important to sit down and think who is gonna be the next one because Gunther is having a historic reign and probably that train will not be beaten in the next 10 years at least so use that momentum for the next person and i feel like chad needs it the most and chad can utilize it the most because he has more experience than champ and gargano sorry to say it but he's on the main roster for a long time and he really knows what he's doing not that the other two don't know but he really 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 knows and he just needs an opportunity in my opinion we'll see how it will go but this is my theory just the theory just angelo's theory the theory after that we had xavier woods versus ivor i like viking raiders i have stated that in the past i'm not a fan of the new day but we're continuing the new day versus viking raiders and probably next week there's gonna be a Coffee Kingston against Ivor. Because at the end of the match, Xavier Woods beat Ivor. But Ivor after that actually beats Xavier Woods in Coffee Kingston. I don't know where this is going. Is this whole thing leading up to Tag Team Championship Gold? Not at all. So I don't know where this is going. It's not really entertaining storyline or angle. We'll see the following weeks. Seth Rollins and Shisuke Nakamura are doing it right. It's all I can say, brothers and sisters. Because last night's segment was pure gold. Seth Rollins and Shisuke Nakamura are building a super fine match, a super cool match, last man standing match, which is perfect for the situation. It's perfect for the broken back of Seth. It's perfect for the character of Shinsuke. That Shinsuke's character is just beautiful, precise, mysterious. And that whole segment was... He was cutting one of these promos where it's just a video package and Seth was watching. At some point Shinsuke attacked him in his back. And in a few situations, when Seth was on the back, the video package started counting one, two, three, and basically it was giving time for Seth to stand up like it's gonna be in the match on Saturday. And finally, Shinsuke hit Kinshasa and he started counting himself to 10. And that was just beautiful. I, I like it. Unfortunately, I don't think Shinsuke is gonna win the title, but if he wins it, I'm not gonna be mad. In the previous circumstances, I would have been mad, but now I think 
it's a good chance for Shinsuke to show what he got. Uh, but I don't think they'll let that happen. After that, we had a quick one, Chelsea Green versus Tegan Knox. Honestly, I can't remember what happened, but Tegan Knox is the next contender in line for the NXT Championship from Becky. Uh, uh, also, for some reason, Natalia started helping Tegan Knox. Probably this whole thing will lead to Natalia versus Tegan versus Becky, where Becky will squash them all. For some reason, in the back, Becky was having some sort of a beef with Indy Hartwell, and Indy Hartwell will be on NXT tomorrow, and I'm really excited for the NXT Women's Championship, to be fair. They had an amazing match, Tiffany Stratton and Be Becky Lynch, at NXT No Mercy. Honestly, at the end of No Mercy, I really wanted to see Jade Cargill debuting, but the way they built Jade Cargill, probably she's not gonna be in NXT at all. So she's gonna be either on Raw or on SmackDown, uh, which means that she won't be competing for the NXT Championship probably because they're promoting her really, really, really hard. And that is kind of bad because the expectations now are high, are super high for Jade Cargill. I had high expectations for her, but this was just me. This was just me. Now everyone has high expectations. And it's better to have low expectations, don't you think? Because Jade Cargill is amazing. She has the looks. She has the it, in my opinion. She has that superstar aura, right? If no one knows her, she's gonna stand out. But the way they built her, they built her like Sasha Banks is coming back kind of situation. And... The expectations are there, and I don't think she's ready for these expectations. She's good, she's amazing, but this will be a bad thing. And I'm excited to see her, really excited, really pumped. I want to see what's in front of her. I want to see Jade Cargill versus Charlotte, versus Becky, versus Bianca, versus everyone. But the way they build it, I think it's a double-edged sword. After that, we had a quick one. Actually, the segment was not quick and the match was not that quick. Basically, Drew McIntyre versus The Miz. I don't know if this is a long-term feud. I don't know what that will lead to. Probably that will lead to Drew McIntyre winning the WWE Championship. But we see like Drew McIntyre becoming more bad, like uh, ruthless merciless uh, and um, basically he beat the Miz, he was rude to the Miz, he said that he just stacking victories and after that he's going to the championship. I remember when Drew McIntyre started his mean winning streak before winning the Royal Rumble a few years back and after that when he won the Royal Rumble he turned face and he basically won the WWE Championship from Brock. I think this is the same situation now. He just started stacking victories. And at some point, it's gonna be that huge match that's gonna give him the opportunity to challenge the World Heavyweight Championship or whatever. Good for Drew, but it's still in development. I, I'm kind of upset that they cut off the Riddle slash Drew part, but I kind of understand it because they want Drew to be more evil, kind of, and Riddle is just a comedy act at this point. We'll see what will happen. And with that being said, that was it. That was it for Raw. It was amazing. I liked it. I'm not sure if I liked it that much because I haven't watched Raw. Like, I haven't watched Raw normally for two weeks, probably, or something like this. But I enjoyed it a lot. Are there any flaws there? Of course, there are always flaws. There are always some great stuff. But in general, it was a good show, great show, amazing show. And I really enjoyed it. And I hope you enjoyed it too. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Peace.